hello everyone welcome back to another video if you're new here i'm queen esther if you've been here from the start welcome back all right so you really need to start taking this thing seriously let me pray heavenly father in the mighty name of jesus lord just use me as a vessel speak to their heart their spirit their soul just locate your children right now in jesus mighty name this will be a blessing for all of you who are crying out to god and asking him how to hear you more how to know your voice how to build my relationship with you this is your answer in jesus name amen You need to start, you know what, I'm going to say this from a place of grace because sometimes I be slacking, but seriously, you really need to take prayer seriously. Prayer will change your life, okay? How I change my life? Through prayer. The enemy is coming at your mind, you want peace, anything, pray. Don't just pray pray all right and i'm gonna give you the foundation of this word okay there's two scriptures philippians 4 verse 6 it says do not be anxious or worried about anything but in everything literally everything every circumstance and situation right by prayer and petition with thanksgiving continue to make your specific requests known to god hallelujah the other scripture is first thessalonians 5 verse 16 to 18. rejoice always pray without ceasing give thanks in all circumstances for this is the will of god in christ jesus for you you know the revelation that just come to me give thanks in all circumstances whenever you're praying give thanks because you have the victory give thanks for what you prayed for and you know god already answered you okay so i was i had a lot of question and you know i felt the holy spirit was pulling me to pray like literally press in but you know i thought i was praying <laughs> but i was praying in my own strength right and I kept hearing the Lord say, I needed to press in prayer. I needed to press in prayer. I would lit, start praying a little bit. And I know, like, no. Nah. Okay, Queen Esther, you know what God means by prayer. Just pray until you know you get that release, what he's calling you to pray for, right? I keep putting off, putting it off. Queen Esther, I want you to come fast and pray. <laughs> Lord, did I hear you right? Yes, you did hear the Lord right. Lord, did you really tell me to fast? Yes, you did. And you know what? I'm probably going to make a video about this, but it comes to me. When the Lord call you to fast, the first thing happen is your flesh starts speaking to you. Oh gosh, what kind of fast do God, does God want me to do? How long is it going to be? Oh my gosh, does that mean I have to stop eating food? And you start worrying about the time. You start worrying about the fleshly things and then you start straying from the fast. No, just surrender the fast to God, okay? Here's an important thing. Fasting is not just about the time or not eating because sometimes we're so focused on not to eat and then we don't give God no time. Our heart is not in it. Sometimes we're so busy, especially when I, I remember when I did a Daniel fast, I was so busy trying to not eat sugar, like focus on the wrong thing. The whole point of the fast was like to consecrate yourself, spend time with God. But I was too busy trying to not eat the wrong thing. Like, like the fast was like invalid. Like, but do you understand what I'm saying? Don't focus on those things. You yield to the spirit with your fast. Don't depend on your own strength with fasting, prayer, or worship. That's what I learned, okay? So here's what the Holy Spirit saying. I went in prayer. Like, I literally yield to the Holy Spirit. You know what, Lord? I don't even know what I'm praying or whatever it is, but have your way. And I just start praying, right? Actually, he did give me some things to pray about. So I start praying about those things. And then the more I press in, the lighter I became. I'm like, wait a minute. 
<laughs> Some of you see prayer as work and burden and oh my gosh, that's too much work and you don't want to do it because you see it as work. But start seeing it as a gift, as a weapon, as something to... Prayer is communication with God. Who doesn't want to talk to God, right? So I just surrender and I just yield to the Holy Spirit. You know, and I was hearing the Lord say, you see what obedience did? <laughs> yield to the Holy Spirit. And I'm telling you, I was praying. I was praying. But the more I pray, the more I want to pray. I'm not getting tired. I'm getting more powerful. Like, I'm just getting lighter. Like, the prayer becomes sweet. I'm like, okay, I need to pray a little bit longer. I need to pray a little bit longer, all right? But sometimes you're praying. Can you over pray? If you start to pray in your own strength, in your own flesh, then you're probably going to start feeling weary, okay? So learn to yield to the Holy Spirit in prayer, all right? Let me give you... Listen to me, I promise you. Spend one night, one day, one hour. It doesn't have to be night praying. Just surrender. And you just pray. You don't know what to start it. Lord, I don't even know what to pray for or what I'm doing. But I yield to you and I surrender to you. You let it go. You just start praying in tongues. You just start praying. Anything you want, you pray. You want power, you pray. That's why they say you can know when somebody been in the secret place. Because it shows in when they're not in the secret place, right? How you, oh, this person here got so clear. Did God really say that? Does God really talk like that? Yes, he does. The more you pray, the more you will be able to discern when he is speaking versus the enemy. Okay? All right, let me go into the teaching. The Holy Spirit said, prior is a bulletproof vest. Okay? When the enemy, it, it protects you from attack and getting shot. That's a very good comparison of prior with protection. And when you wear a bulletproof vest, even if you get shot, it doesn't like hit you that hard or it protects you. And sometimes it just hit the thing and fall off. Sometimes it just probably go through the vest a little bit and get a little zap, right? Because that's the same thing with prior. When you pray, is like your bulletproof vest. When the enemy try to come at you, you're too busy praying. You're, you're, you're in the presence of God. Those lies is just falling off. Those attacks is just falling off because you're combating the enemy every single day. And this is what the Lord say. Don't see prayer as work. Don't see prayer as a routine. Make prayer a lifestyle, okay? A lifestyle. Every single thing you pray for, literally. Going down the street, I'm praying. Don't be really just about prayer. Excuse me. I remember I used to aim to pray for one hour, praying in my own strength, right? Just let the Holy Spirit lead you in prayer. There's no time in prayer. Whatever the Lord is pulling you to pray or how long, you, you yield to that, okay? Don't give in to these religious customs that you have to pray for one hour, Every single day or whatever. Sometimes the Holy Spirit will make you pray for three hours. But guess what? He's giving you the grace to do it. So you only feel like one hour. Sometimes you pray for two hours and you only feel like 20 minutes. Because God is giving you the grace to pray. Okay? Ask if you feel like prayer is a burden and stuff like that. You ask Holy Spirit to give you the grace to pray. Okay? You don't have to do it in your own strength. He just needs you to yield. Okay? Prayer is the secret of walking in the power of the Spirit. You want power? You pray. You want to look at Elijah. Elijah was a man of prayer. Why you think he could call down all kind of stuff and when God tell him things, he believed because he always in prayer. He know God's voice. He know what God is capable of. He know what God spoke to him. Hallelujah. He didn't just to say rainfall and rainfall. Okay? It when you pray, the more you pray, the more you get in relationship with God, the more grace God gives you to do certain things. This is why, I'll, oh, 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 did they do that? How come they get to do that? I am prophetic too, but you're not seeing what they are doing behind the scene. You're not seeing what they're doing in the secret place, okay? You have to put the work in. I know a lot of people, I'm not even going to go there. I don't feel like going there. <laughs> the Lord just wants you to understand the power of prayer. 
ask him for strategy to help you pray. Ask him for the grace to pray. Ask him for the mantle of prayer. I'm telling you, an intercession. God is calling some of you to intercede, but you're depending on your own strength or you're saying, this is going to be too much. I don't know what to pray. Yield, okay? He said, prayer is the secret of walking in the power of the spirit, right? That's the strategy for victory. You want victory in any area of your life? You pray. You want to defeat the enemy? You pray, okay? Prayer and fasting too. Very powerful combination, all right? Your spirit, okay, I don't know why I just come to it. You know what? Literally, all God needs from us is to just pray. Literally. He put us on the earth. We ain't got to stress for nothing. You have a problem, you pray about it. He will give you the answer. He will give you the strategy. But the first thing we do is go to other sources before we pray. And then when there's nothing else, then sometime, then after that, we go to prayer. But make prayer your first strategy, your first priority, the first source you go to with anything. All right? Hallelujah. He's saying to trust the, the leading of the Holy Spirit. All right, so, you're, okay, here's this. So, after I was deep in prayer, right, I'm like, wow, all of a sudden, it's like, the Holy Spirit is literally in my ears, just talking to me, like, literally. It be, his voice became so clear, like, I wasn't having a hard time, like, God, is that you or not? Like, literally, your spirit, your spirit is in tune with the spirit when you pray. You hear the Holy Spirit more clearly. So if you want to hear God more clearly, you want to hear the Spirit more clearly, you pray more. You pray, ask Him for strategy, ask Him for wisdom, ask Him for guidance, and you read the Bible. You read the Word. Those two is the most important thing. You have to read the Word and pray. Read the Word and pray. And He's saying to learn to quiet your spirit when you pray, okay? Don't pay attention to the noise. Just let the spirit flow. Okay, that's what he's saying. Don't pay attention to the noise. Let the spirit flow when you pray. All right? Hallelujah. And here what he said. He said, letting go in prayer. This is wisdom even myself needed, right? And all, all of us need this as believers. Point blank, period. You have to learn to let go when you go in prayer. He said, surrender prayer to me when you pray. Don't go in there thinking, all right, this is what I used to do when I used to fast, going in spiritual warfare at 12 a.m. I pray hard and loud and seriously. Like literally, that's me praying in my own strength. <laughs> Fasting work and prayer work, but you have to learn to yield. And then if you pray in all these things with no faith behind it, you're not going to see no result, unfortunately, okay? Surrender prayer to me when you pray. This is what the Holy Spirit said. Don't pray in your own effort and strength, okay? When you do that, you're just going to want to not pray. And that's not what the Lord wants. The Lord wants to make pray through you. That's the revelation. When you go in prayer, allow the Holy Spirit to pray through you. Allow the Holy Spirit to pray for you stop going in with your own strength i'm going in with this one specific thing and i'm not letting go even though you're praying and the holy spirit is whispering something else to you for you to pray for you're like no i'm not listening to you satan and you're <laughs> you're still on that one topic <laughs> but sometimes you are praying away the symptom but the holy spirit is putting this topic on your heart so you can pray to get rid of the root cause of the symptom. Hallelujah. That's a whole revelation right there. I don't know who needs to hear that. Okay. Hallelujah. Huh. He said to learn to, when you come in prayer, come in prayer with a repentant heart and a humble heart. Repent and be humble in prayer. Okay. When you enter in prayer, Go into prayer with a repentance heart. Repent. Thanksgiving. Confess. Just, Lord, I'm struggling with this. I don't even know what I need to pray for. 
pray to me holy spirit lead me in this fire and you just start praying and let the holy spirit flow i promise you prior when you don't put in your own effort and your own strength it feel like you're flying you're floating you're like oh my gosh i need to pray longer like it's it's actually the presence of god that surrounds you when you pray so it feels like you're floating like you're on cloud nine like whoa i could pray for next 10 hours but if that's not the grace that god gives you to pray for 10 hours you're gonna feel burned out so yield to the spirit all right he said don't pray in your own effort and strength it's not only the words it's also the heart don't just pray for one hour but your heart is far from the prior you're not praying from your heart you're just praying just to pray so you don't feel bad you're praying just to pray so god thinks god see me oh i just pray for one hour and stuff like that all right a lot of us is bound to this religious belief that you praying and oh i'm gonna pray and i'm gonna please god and yeah prayer and stuff please god but you cannot it's god's grace like that's not that you should have a humble posture that's what he mean by a humble posture don't just show up to pray just to go brag that i pray one hour every day you get me yet still your heart is not in the prayer he said it's not only the words it's also the heart posture is important in prayer that's what i'm saying posture is important in prayer and don't just pray for yourself in prayer this is coming to me some of us only just pray for ourselves some of us only pray for our own needs and we forget everybody else sometimes you need something you can generally genuinely go in prayer and just pray for somebody else who need the same thing and you see how god moves but don't just pray just do to make god move pray because you actually love and have compassion on this person lord i know this i'm homeless but this person is homeless and she have kids and stuff so you know what tonight i'm gonna pray for this person for you to open the door for a house instead of praying for myself i'm gonna pray for this lady tonight and i'm telling you that's what he means by your heart should be in the right posture when you pray don't just pray for lord bless me with a big house because you want to go show off he knows the posture behind the prayer very important all right hallelujah he's saying to don't compromise prayer for the world what, what do you mean ah oh, don't give up your lifestyle of praying for the world so say you know you pray 8 p.m every night but tonight there is this party and at the bar somebody invite me and you just all right i could pray tomorrow that one party that one distraction i'm talking see he's saying for the world okay this is about the world you give up the prior night just to that one party the next day the same thing the next day the same thing until you lose your prior life okay he's saying do not compromise your prior life for the world all right hallelujah learn to take correction in prior okay sometimes we are praying and we are hearing something and i'm like you're like wait a minute is that the holy spirit no nah, no nah, i'm not hearing right and you're still praying and holy spirit is saying i need you to repent for unforgiveness i need you to let this go i need you to forgive this person yes that is the holy spirit but some of you uh, just don't want to do it you know it's the holy spirit and then sometimes you don't even go and pray because you're like, you're like ah, i keep hearing this I, I don't even know if that's god or the holy spirit i'm just not gonna pray don't do that all right he said learn to take correction in prayer and learn to receive in prayer come prepared to receive when you pray don't just pray five hours and then don't give god a chance to speak to you or answer you give you wisdom or strategy you know i used to do this i used to just pray and get up no he wants you to learn to tarry in prayer for answers sometimes you pray you finish praying you're, you're listening it's like 10 minutes nothing and you're like eh, i guess he doesn't want to say something no you say prayer is a communication just wait a little longer learn to have patience in prayer i'm telling you this 
I am uh, learning. I'm, yeah, that's what me too. Okay, <laughs> learn to have patience in prayer. He said, "Come prepared to receive." How do you come to prayer to receive? You have an open heart to receive, right? And you come with a journal, with a pen, because you're expecting God to answer you, and you want to steward whatever He's gonna tell you, so you don't forget. So you show up in prayer with a journal, a pen paper a pen something to take note and an open heart to receive what god is saying whether it's correction repentance strategy just make sure you are open to receive and he said pray until you know you have the victory don't see the time okay some of you set a time all right i'm gonna pray for 30 minutes today 30 minutes you have you're midway in the prayer you're just about to like step in the the ream of the deep deep prayer and because the alarm go off you stop praying you didn't get the answer you didn't finish the prayer like don't go and give yourself time to pray right and he's saying to give yourself grace too he's not telling you this and then oh my gosh i do this and oh my gosh it's bad i can't go pray again no give yourself grace while you learn all right this these are just wisdom to help you grow but at the same time give yourself grace all right but he's just telling you some of these things so you don't have to like figure out like what am i doing wrong like so you have a strategy for prior to help you in prior is this everything no because when you go in prior he probably give you strategy to come share with the body of christ we all learn from each other okay i don't know everything i'm still learning just as though everybody else is still learning there's always another level okay pray until you see the victory don't see the time how do you know you have the victory when you pray because you just feel like going you surrender the prayer and the more you pray it's like more stuff is coming up to pray about and you're praying and you're praying and you're praying this is what i notice when I pray and the Lord is finished praying through me, I literally just start thanking him and worshiping and singing in tongues or thanking him in tongues. I, I don't have to like think about it or try it. It literally just starts flowing out. That's one way I know that, okay, I have the victory and the prayer is done. And that's what Holy Spirit wanted me to pray for today. Again, prayer don't, you could pray for one minute. You could pray for 10 minutes. You could pray for five hours, whatever the Lord is leading you yield to the spirit okay don't put a time and prayer that's what i'm gonna tell you i made that mistake oh gosh i have to worship for one hour and i'm gonna have to pray for one hour i stopped doing that i like lord i surrender i yield to you have your way and i just make the lord do what he does even with bible study sometimes you dare all right i'm gonna read one chapter every day or something something and you didn't really get nothing i mean you get something but sometimes you just read one scripture. You, you the the Holy Spirit lead us to this one verse. Literally, like today, I was reading my, I was reading like a children devotional and stuff. And I was already saying, "Wow, I really need to pray more and stuff." Man, what like you feel the presence of God when you pray? Like who doesn't want that peace, right? And I was reading the devotional, and it was saying. Oh, the power of God is we are like a jar, basically, and the power is inside of us. God just needs us as a vessel to release that power. And how does God do this? And it literally say prayer. I'm like, what? <laughs> prayer? And I feel like, I, I mean, I, I read this thing all the time. I know about prayer all the time, but I guess the revelation just hit my spirit. Wait a minute. I literally need to pray about everything like the scriptures say right every five seconds i'm praying i'm praying in tongues if i'm not praying something specific i'm praying in tongues i'm praying i pray every day you you you, you declare it okay you say it you don't need to lord I, I love to pray i'm a woman of prayer i'm a man of prayer i pray every day i pray about everything i pray 24 7 you just uh declare these things even if you don't see it yet, you declare it and you believe it. You keep saying it until it becomes a habit and you literally pray about everything. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you, okay? Hallelujah. And just as the scriptures say, draw close to me 
and I'll draw close to you. You want to get closer to the Holy Spirit? You want to be his best friend and hear his voice? Pray more. Pray more. I, rem I literally I was like, what? Wait a minute. I'm hearing the Holy Spirit so much clearer. Like, what? And he's like, draw close to me and I'll draw close to you. The more time you spend with God, the closer you get, the more you understand him, the more you hear him, the clearer he speaks. It's not even that the clearer he speaks. He always speaks. But your spirit finally starts getting in tune. Nothing about God changes. Prayer changes us, not God, okay? Prayer brings us closer to the Holy Spirit because he literally lives inside of us. And that was another revelation. How many times the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives inside of us? Um, The Holy Spirit dwell inside of us. And I mean, greater is he that is in Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I hear this scripture all the time. And I say it all the time. And But I felt like something hit me today. I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> greater is he. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Wait a minute. Why do we think that we are calling God from heaven to come down in and be with us? You know, and sometimes, even in worship and stuff, don't feel like, oh my gosh, I, I don't feel the Holy Spirit. He's not here. That's the present. That's the manifestation presence of the Holy Spirit. That doesn't mean he doesn't receive your worship or you're not worshiping right because you don't feel anything. You worship in spirit and truth by faith, okay? Everything comes down to faith. You don't need to feel it to know that you're worshiping God and he's receiving your worship and, and stuff like that. And I'm like, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Wait a minute. God is literally inside of me. And that's why he's saying greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world, which is the devil. Because he created the devil and the devil cannot defeat God. So greater is he that is in me. I'm like, what? What? <laughs> The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is inside of me. That means I can do everything he does. Listen to me. I read this scripture a lot of time. But I felt like I just went into this meditation. I'm like, what? Wait a minute. None of this is not even me. And this is what a lot of us do. We think it, we, we depend on our own strength with certain things and not remembering that it's not us. It's God that's inside of us. It's the spirit of God that's inside of us that just needs us to yield and surrender so he could work through us. It's the same with prayer. All right. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh my God. And the heart is important too when you're worshiping. Everything literally leads back to the heart. Literally. Like you could turn on music every day and worship, worship. But your heart is not in the worship. Worship in spirit and truth. Sometimes when you start the worship, you're not in the mood. But then you get there. You get what I'm saying? Don't worry about what you feel. Just start, okay? Ask the Holy Spirit to give you the grace to pray, to fast, to everything. This is what I, I come to realize. Stop trying to do things in our own strength, okay? I used to do this. And this is from a place of grace and love. When you realize that you don't have to stretch yourself, you can't secure in God, believe me, you'll stop stretching yourself, okay? Give God the glory. Give God everything. You know, pray for prayer. Pray for the mantle of prayer. Prayer will change your life. Prayer will shift your atmosphere. Prayer will change everything around you. Anything you don't like, anything you don't see, anything stressing you, you'll pray about it. Literally. Pray about everything. Don't just only pray for yourself. Pray for your family, your friends, leaders, all these things. You know, at one point I was just praying for myself. And the Lord, Lord said, pray for other people. Okay? Ask God for the grace to pray and pray for other people. And some of you, there's, uh, you have the grace to intercede and intercession. But you don't even know this. You know what? And the Lord pointed out to me, prayer is actually a gift. I mean, I know it's a gift. But some of you literally have the grace to intercede like that's a spiritual gift to just pray you could pray for 10 hours and to you it's like one hour let somebody else try that and they no 
they didn't they, they, god didn't give them the grace for that but can you ask for the grace for it yes ask in faith what who i don't i don't know who god gonna say no to when they're asking for grace to actually pray when they have the right intention behind the heart think about it right so i pray this word blesses you seriously take what i'm telling you seriously the lord been yielding me to literally ascending prayer and stuff and i have been running oh lord uh, find an excuse and then i finally yield to the holy spirit i'm like wow why didn't i listen long ago <laughs> i pray you have a beautiful day and take prayer seriously go to god and ask him for help strategy wisdom to help you grow in prayer and fasting in any area of your life all right have a beautiful day stay blessed and seriously, if you don't know Jesus, this prayer thing, you're just going to be praying. Because this only works because of what Jesus did for the cross. We are able to go stand before the presence of the Lord. So, just surrender to Christ. So you can experience all this peace and love and joy and his presence. If you want to experience the presence of God, you have to be in covenant with him. You have to know him, okay? So I pray you surrender to the gospel today. Lord Jesus, I invite you in my heart to be my Lord and personal Savior. And just ask him to fill you with his love and his peace and to teach you, guide you, and lead you. And make you a man and woman of prayer. Okay, I've been sleeping on my prior life. Like, yeah. Listen, we're going higher, okay? We are ascending. We're not just going to do 30 minutes, and because in 30 minutes, we're going to stop. We're just going to keep pushing where the Holy Spirit pushing us. If you're just starting out, and the Holy Spirit leading you to pray for five minutes, that's fine. Again, it's about the heart. It's not about the length of time. But if the Lord is calling some of you to ascend in prayer, you know who you are. He's been waking you up at night, right? And early in the morning, yeah, he's calling some of you to stand and post for your marriage. Mm -hmm. This is your confirmation. You did hear the Lord, right? All right. Press in prayer. Have a beautiful day. Stay blessed. And share this video with somebody who is struggling and stressing and just worrying. This is what they need to pray. All right. Have a beautiful day. Bye.